So in most statistics classes, students are supposed to learn a dozen or so statistical tests. And a really great question I get from my students every semester is, how do I know which tests I'm supposed to use? And that's a great question considering there's like a dozen of them. And if you just learn all of the different uh, statistical tests, then you end up leaving a statistics class thinking, I mean, I know all these tests, but I just don't know which one to use and when. So this lecture is going to be dedicated to introducing the different types of statistics tests, uh, specifically the ones that are typically involved in undergraduate level statistics classes, and when to use them. So I'm going to first run through all the different tests that we'll be covering throughout this course, and then I'm going to analyze when to use which one. So there are one sample Z test for the mean, one sample T test for the mean, one sample Z test for proportions, one sample T test for proportions, two sample, two independent sample tests for the mean, two independent sample tests for proportions, matched or paired sample tests, chi-squared tests, regression tests, and one-way ANOVA tests. That's a huge list of tests. And it can kind of be overwhelming, and I understand that. It took me a while to be able to understand which one to use and when. So in order to do that, I'm going to break down all these different tests, explain what they are, what their purposes are, and that should hopefully clarify when to use which test. So let's start with the first category of tests. There are two tests in this category. This is the one sample Z test for the mean. And there is the one sample T test. That's not how you spell test. For the mean. Now, these two tests are really similar to each other. Uh, I'm going to break down the differences in a second here, but let me first address what this does. Suppose Apple claims that the average age of their user was like 45. Now, you and I both know that's not correct. So suppose we gather like a sample of like a thousand uh, Apple users and we find the average age. We have this average. I want to want to clarify that we are calculating a mean here. And we're trying to compare that mean to what the scientific community believes in. So the scientific community, or I guess in this case, Apple, believes that the average is 45. And we're trying to prove them wrong. We're trying to say, no, you say it's 45. I don't think it's 45. I actually think it's not 45. I think it might be around 20 something. Right? So you gather a large sample, you calculate the average, you notice the average is, is different than 45. And then these tests will allow you to determine if the difference between the averages, the average that you calculated with your sample, and Apple's claim, which is 45, these two tests will determine whether or not those two numbers are different from each other. Now, what's the difference between a Z test and a T test? It's a great question. Pretty much nothing. Um, so let me explain what I mean by that. First off, Z tests in general are terrible. They suck. Um, they make the math a little bit easier, but no one should ever use a Z test. If you ever see Z tests in general, just avoid them like the plague because they make assumptions that should never be made in the first place. Typically, T tests are way better. If I ever read a research paper that involves any statistics tests, I will never see a Z test. And if I do, I'm going to start questioning the authority of what the paper is trying to say. So uh, we're going to talk about this later on. But just for now, just understand that the one sample T test for the mean is uh, the purpose of that is to determine whether your sample average is statistically significant than what everyone thinks the average is. Now let's move on to the next category. The next category is very uh, similar. It's the one, one sample Z test for, in this case, not the mean, but the uh, for a proportion. Now what's the difference between a mean and a proportion? Well, a proportion is uh, meant for rather qualitative variables. So for example, I'm interested in maybe, are you a Republican or are you not a Republican? That kind of question is a qualitative question. And if I gather a huge sample, I can't really compute an average. Like I would compute a proportion 
of Republicans. So for example, if I gathered a thousand people, I wouldn't say that the average is like Republican. You can't really compute average if the responses are all qualitative. You have Republicans and not Republicans. Same thing with gender. If you gather a huge group of people and you want to know, um, you want to know information about the uh, that group of people in terms of their gender. You have male and female, right? And the idea is you can't really calculate the average. You can't add up all the numbers and divide by the total number of numbers because the responses aren't numbers; they're qualitative responses. And so you can make it qual uh, quantitative by uh, calculating a proportion. So you might say, okay, well, 50% of the sample was male, or 51% of the sample was male. Or you might say 70% of, um, of the sample was not Republican. And so now you have something to work with. And so these type of tests are more for qualitative variables. And the same principle applies. Let's say, for example, um, in the 2016 election, there were all of these uh, claims that Hillary Clinton was going to win the election. Um, and let's say people were saying that she was going to win, um, and people were, um, certain that she was going to win by like, um, I don't know, it was like 50 electoral votes or something like that. Um, or that 60 something, 65% of the people were going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Well, that wasn't the case, was it? Those, uh, those proportions were incorrect. Those polls in a sense were incorrect or the way they conducted their polling was poor in a sense. It wasn't representative of the actual population. And so the idea is if someone comes out and says, no, I disagree with this, this claim about the proportion of people who are gonna vote for Hillary Clinton, I have a different proportion. I think it's actually 45%. Now, are those two proportions different from each other? That's what these tests measure. These tests measure is your proportion of your sample, your one sample, different from what everyone believes the proportion is. Let me give you one more example. 75% uh, of, the, uh, of the people claim to be Christian, in, in, in the U.S. at least, in the U.S. Um, what might be interesting is to say, I don't think it's 75%, I think it's a different percentage. So you, you gather a group of like 1,000 people, you calculate what proportion of that sample is Christian. You find it's 60%. Now, the next question is, is 60% different from 75%? Or should I say, is it different enough to say, yeah, it's not 75%, it's 60%. And that's what these tests can do. But once again, what's the difference between a Z-test and a T-test? Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, sloppiness. If you use this, then you're sloppy. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but that's actually legit. If you use a Z-test ever, I'm just, I'm baffled why you would ever use something like that. So, um, so far we've gone over four different tests and these are all with one sample, but let's talk about what you do with multiple samples. And this is where things get kind of interesting. So first let's talk about the two independent sample tests for the mean. So I'm gonna write that down. The two sample independent test For the mean. So uh, this is really useful if you're conducting an experiment. Whenever you're conducting an experiment, you typically will have a control group and a treatment group. You will have two samples. And you want to know, are these samples, are the results of these samples statistically significant? And so you want to measure the mean of this group mean one, and the mean of this group, mean two. And the question is, are these two averages different from each other? Different enough to suggest that whatever the treatment was, it made a difference. So for example, suppose you found a cure to cancer, and um, you notice that the results of one group, uh, all these people are getting cured, and the other group, not so much. Um, the control group, the you know, no one's getting cured. Right, you might notice that, hey, my treatment does something here, and it's statistically significant. That's the kind of thing that we're dealing with when we talk about two sample tests in general. Now, this is a two sample test for the mean. So 
Cancer might only work for proportions, like we would say, well, 50% of the fifty uh, percent of the people here were cured and the other 50% were not. You know, that's more proportion stuff. I might be more interested in, um, let's say, how much cholesterol is in e uh, the average cholesterol in each group after giving a certain medication. And I noticed that the average cholesterol in the treatment group was significantly smaller than the cholesterol in the other group. And so you might say, this medicine lowers cholesterol. Because the two samples here, these two samples, have statistically significant differences. And therefore, the treatment can be the, the, um, the thing that we associate to why there is a difference. Uh, likewise, there is a two-sample independent test for proportions. And so you could probably guess what this is going to be. In this case, instead of measuring uh, sample averages, we're measuring proportions. So we have proportion one and proportion two. So for example, we're measuring whether or not, uh, maybe something qualitative. Are you depressed? Might be the question. And we give um, one group, the control group, a placebo. And we give the other uh, tr group, the treatment group, some antidepressants, some things that make people antidepressed. And in both groups, we gather maybe some people who claim to be depressed or they're um, considered depressed. And we want to see, does this antidepressant, act antidepressant actually affect something? Well, at the end of the, um, of the study, we ask the question, are you sad, let's say, or are you depressed? And we notice that the treatment group has a higher proportion of um, people who say, yeah, I feel better now. I don't, I don't feel sad. Whereas the control group, you have just the same amount. And you notice those two proportions are now statistically significant. And that's how you can associate the treatment to the cause of why um, the proportion is now different. So, so far we're over, we're pretty much almost done with all the different types of uh, statistics tests. Let's talk about the paired sample test, or some sometimes it's referred to as the matched or paired sample test. Now, this is very similar to the two sample um, test for the mean or the proportion, what we just talked about. But in this case, the samples are typically the same group of people. They're not independent of each other. They're not like completely different samples. In fact, typically it's the same sample, but measured twice. So for example, I might be interested in an average before and an average after. And I might be interested in, did the average actually change enough? Was there a change in this, um, in, in this experiment? And that's what this test can measure. So in this case, the samples are not independent of each other. They're actually dependent of each other. And typically, they're the same sample. So for example, maybe I have a classroom, and I want to know whether or not my lecture improves the, uh, the test score of my math test. And so what I do is I give a, a pretest, and I get an average before. And then I do my lecture, and then I give um, the test again, and I calculate the average after. And so now the question is, um, are those averages statistically significant from each other? And so in this case, again, the two samples are dependent on each other. They are not independent of each other. So that's the slight difference here. Next up, we have the chi-squared test. Now let's talk about the regression test before we go into the chi-squared test. So I'm going to switch these up a little bit. Let's talk about the regression test. So you've probably heard regression at some point, maybe in high school mathematics. Um, this is typically taught in high school math, or at least it should be according to the common core standards. Um, but the idea is we have two variables, um, and they're both quantitative. And we want to measure, do these two variables have any sort of association with them? Is there any sort of correlation involved? And regression will help you determine how correlated or how associated two variables are. So you have variable one X and variable two Y, and, you want, and they're both quantitative. And the idea is for every dot here, every single dot, 
represents you measuring both X and Y simultaneously. So for example, I might want to uh, calculate your age and your GPA. And I, I would plot that on this graph. And I do that with everyone. I measure their age and their GPA, age, GPA. And I graph all of these points and I, I, I'm interested in whether or not age has anything to do with GPA. And so that's what regression is. Now, oops, I just completely exited out that. Let me pull that back up. This is my, this is my control panel for all of you who are interested in that. All right, uh, let's go back to this. Very good. Um, let's talk about the chi-squared test. The chi-squared test is very similar. The chi-squared test determines if there is a relationship with two variables that are qualitative. So for example, so in this case, I'm not going up to you and I'm I'm not going to ask you quantitative questions. I'm actually going to ask you qualitative questions. So in this case, I might ask you, are you let me see if I can get this right. Um, uh, let's do, there we go. Yeah, so are you male or are you female? But I'm going to ask you two questions. I'm going to ask you, what's your gender? But I might also ask you, um, let's say, uh, are you blonde or not blonde? And I want to determine, is there a relationship between your gender and your hair color? Now, it's really hard to determine if there's a relationship because those aren't quantitative. You can't measure them on a graph. You can't draw uh, plot points because these variables are binary. There are only two options. And so in this case, maybe we notice that there are, um, you know, 100 male, male blondes, but only two uh, males that are not blonde and three females that are blonde and 250 females that are not blonde. In this example, we notice that if you're male, you're probably going to be a blonde. And if you're a female, you're probably going to be not blonde. There's sort of a relationship here. There's a correlation between these two variables. But it's hard to see there because we can't really graph it. There's no way to graph this. And so the chi-squared test can solve this problem by allowing us to determine whether or not two qualitative variables are different from each other. Now, last but not least, we have the one-way ANOVA test. I'll just do one-way ANOVA test. Now, many, many statistics classes will not go this far. They will stop before we even get here. But every once in a while, I'll see a statistics class that will talk about the one-way ANOVA test. So let me explain what the one-way ANOVA test is. The idea is the one the ANOVA test in general is the same thing as here I'll even write this down ANOVA is the same thing as the two sample independent te uh, test independent there we go test so if you remember, uh, the two sample t uh, independent test was you have two samples that are not the same samples, maybe like a treatment group and a control group, and you want to know whether or not the treatment group makes, a uh, makes some sort of difference in the results. Um, well, the ANOVA test is exactly the same thing, except instead of two samples, typically we would do some like N samples. So maybe we have all sorts of different medications. We have um, a control group treatment one, treatment two, treatment three. We want to try all sorts of different things. The one-way ANOVA test can help us do that. We want to see which of the different um, treatments is going to affect the results um, that are quantitative in nature. So again, it's, very, it, it's basically the concept of the two-sample independent t-test, but instead of a treatment group and a control group, we would have control group, Treatment group one, treatment group two, treatment group three. And we want to know, are those groups statistically significant from each other? And that's what the ANOVA test is for. Now, in the upcoming lectures, we're going to be talking about the many different, all of these statistics tests, and we're going to explain how to conduct them. And, um, you know, I'm going to reemphasize their purposes again so that we get a better understanding of when to use them as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next lecture.